So the first step into this new field or um, modernized field of architecture was um, the living footbridge you already know from the, from the posters here of this conference. Um, it was a, a project I did as a student. The idea was to make it as simple as possible, simply construct a load-bearing structure um, basically of living trees, combining it with a technical platform where you can walk on. But this is a drawing. And this is the first picture, and I think that's a very surprising moment when you construct something and then you wait and then it spoods out. Not only something grows over it, but the architecture itself spoods out. And they show that it is, this, the thing itself is alive. And it is somehow usable. It is not really a, a used bridge. It is to demonstrate, but it was carrying the loads of the people from the first day on and growing stronger over the time. And then a process of development starts where you don't really have the control. As an architect, you are very used to draw, to make plans, make precise plans, how a structure works, how a structure looks like. Here we can't really plan. We just start at a specific point and then we let it go. In the beginning we had the columns visible and then we have a green wall in a way. So at that point I sent a photographer to the building but he couldn't find the building and went back, back because it was only looking like a hatch in a way. And then we prune it a little bit and then it really sprouts in the spring. So we have, of course, the seasons you are normally used to see when you look at a tree now um, shown by the building itself. Um, this is kind of a walk through the treetop, through the crown of a tree with all these aesthetic effect from the leaves. You normally know um, from the shades only. For me, and that's one reason why we do this, is the, the most pleasuring place, the most interesting place, and the most aesthetic place of the park, let's say, is not on the floor, it's on, in the top, in the crown of the trees. And we make this constructible, designable, and accessible in a way. And this is autumn, for example. I just want to talk about the ghost pattern here a little bit. So many people ask, is it, is it rising every, every year? Is it go, growing up in a way? It is not. So it's not an elevator. It's a footbridge. Um, the, see, uh, the reason is very simple. The tree is going in length only where the twigs are green, where the bark is green. They are the elongate, and then the elongation <laughs> stops, and they grow only in thickness. So this is not a problem of deformation. It's a problem of adaptation, in a way. Just the look in the winter, completely different again. And this is uh, last summer. This is a guy who has to prune, so there's a lot of work to do at this point. Yeah. Um, and it really completely disappears. It's a, a very fast growing willow tree to demonstrate simply what happens. And uh, it's really gone in summer. So then we prune back in the winter and so on. Another process you can really see when you look at the details over time. This is the detail between um, the living vertical elements to carrying the load and the handrail made of stainless steel. This picture is after two weeks or so. This is in the first year. And this is something like three or four years. So it really form fits in a way. Somehow it's a problematic point because it can rot inside and so on, but we really try um, to, to give this uh, a starting point and a basic form that the water runs out and so on, that this is not so critical. And uh, if it works good, it's a very, very strong connection between these very different elements. We were choosing the stainless steel, um, this shiny material that does not change over time to make, to give it the, the um, biggest contrast to the ever-changing bark that becomes uh, thicker and more rough over time and uh, growing in thickness and we really can see that it becomes older and thicker and stronger and so on. So the relation of the thickness uh, of the diameter has completely changed. In the beginning the pipe was thicker than the plants and now it's the other way around because of the growth. 
we did some um, more buildings in this technique, but then I realized that uh, in the landscape where you really can't see these elements, um, they do not have the effect they could have in the city, because in the city we are really lacking of green. And, uh, but when you want to go in the city, you have to use uh, suitable trees, and the willow trees we used before were not suitable. And um, the aim was to construct immediately in the dimension of a fully grown tree. So just to um, go back to the introduction of the lecture, I, I was telling the different ways of construction and planting, or the different approaches of constructing and planting. Um, and here we wanted really to, to merge it. We wanted to construct a tree in a way. Yeah. So how to construct a tree? It's not an easy task. Uh, so I, I broadened my perspective a little bit. I had the chance, chance to go to French Guiana and to visit the rainforests where much more species grow uh, than here in Europe. This is um, an example of the strangler fig tree, which is somehow growing um, the other way around normal trees do. Here, it's, uh, the, the, the growth pattern is drawn. This is germinating in the crown of a tree, sending down aerial roots that are growing around the trunk of this host tree, connecting, um, merging to a kind of a network that works really like a strong framework. Um, and in the end, the host tree dies, and a naturally grown framework construction appears, looking like this. So that's, that already, it's, that's done by nature, but really looks like a kind of a construction. And it emerges very, very fast because of this quite intelligence, uh, quite intelligence um, developmental process. We were trying then to adapt this to a technical approach and to the species we have here in Europe. So you can more or less use any species um, um, with this technique we call plant addition. We add one plant on top of the other. So um, here we have only one. Normally a gardener plants this and waits until it's big and we just plant two or three and the others we put in containers and graft them together that they merge to one. So in the end, you have one organism. And since the roots in the ground have the most space available, oops, sorry, and uh, the most water available, um, they grow the most. And then when they merge to one organism, you can just cut away the containers. So you have constructed and designed an artificial plant. So this was a theory no one believed in the beginning. So when I started my PhD, I didn't tell um, 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 the foundation what I was planning to do. I told some different things um, because they all said, oh, spooky, it doesn't work. Um, so, but anyway, we uh, applied this technique to uh, um, the first experimental building in 2009, which was uh, the final project of my PhD in the end. And it was simply the idea to make something vertical and if you have less money, only a few money, it is small and then it's a tower. So that's why it is a tower, a, a timber tower made of living wood. Um, and we somehow had to design it. We didn't know really how. We only knew there will be a crown of a tree and there will be three levels. So we made a planning and then we immediately started constructing. Here we are artificially recreating, the, let's say the host tree normally, of this triangular fig tree. This is a scaffold construction, a temporary scaffold. And there we put in different levels where you can walk on. And these levels also are carrying the containers where the plants are growing. They are watered and uh, treated with fertilizer, of course. That they grow. And then after four days, you have reached more or less the size of a fully grown tree. Then you have to bring somehow these, in this case, more than 400 trees together that they merge to one. So there are traditional techniques like grafting, but uh, we had more than one and a half thousand connection points. And if you start grafting, each graft takes half an hour, you will be never finished. So it's faster to plant a tree. So that's, that's a result of the construction. It's not finished, of course. It's only the starting point of a development. And that's what we did. So here, the gardeners leave the room normally. We just drill a hole and put a screw through these two um, 
living pieces of, of plants to press them together. It may somehow look strange to screw together living plants, but um, the only thing you have to do is to give the pre pressure that they don't move apart when they grow in thickness, and then they push away the bark and merge to one piece of wood. And then it's done. The water can be transported from one plant to the next. The round that you, cre that you in, uh, create here when drilling the hole and so on, it heals and it, it, it's a process of self-repair. And then after two years, you don't see anything. The screw is inside, but outside it is closed with the bark again. With the bark again. Okay, so this is the finished construction and the starting point of the growth. The, the first year, you even can see from the outside that this, in the beginning you can see separate plants and then the, the crown, the, it merges to one. It's one shape in the end. This is autumn and the first winter and the next spring and summer and so on. So it's some years old now. Um, and here you can see that we are really uh, applying this technique. This is the topmost um, level of the plant containers. Here is the container. And this was the topmost plant. And then we cut it apart. And then it gets the water from deeper below. So when we do this step by step, year by year, and after seven years, this is uh, uh, the forecast, we will have uh, living construction completely rooted in the ground. And then some when we probably can remove the scaffold. And that's a very interesting question, when we can remove the scaffold. So if you ask a um, structural engineer to calculate this, you will never get an answer. <laughs> Of course, because if, you, if he asks, where are your load-bearing elements, you can say, no, I don't know. So how thick are they? I don't know. And the material property, I don't know, too. So this is very difficult. So it somehow emerged, and you have to deal with this process, what will come, in a way. The only thing you know is more or less the environmental conditions, but you don't know the weather impact. And you know something about the growth patterns of the plants. This is a very complicated field. It's from forest to science and from plant physiology and from ma very many different fields. In my PhD, I, I try to break down this to an understandable level for, for architects that you can really try to design the starting point of this growth process. I just want to highlight three of these patterns which are quite important. One is the concurrence between different plants. So if one plants a forest with 100 trees, they occupy the space and then it is too dense in a way. Because they grow uh, and the whole tree is growing, it needs more energy, it creates more leaves and so on. So some have to die, some more have to die, and in the, in the end you end up with four. So this is a very natural process, you can't stop it with designing something, of course. It's just how nature works. And the second is so-called geomorphic and geotropic reaction. It's a special term. It simply says that the tree reacts on the angle, where you, how you put it, of course. It's not a stupid piece of wood. It's an entity. And if you put it vertical, it's a normal way. But if you put it horizontal or in a specific angle, it puts out on a completely different way and then it grows furthermore in a completely different way. And so you have, somehow have to deal with this. And the last is <coughs> that you normally have, if this is the roots and this is the, the leaves, you have one way, the trunk, to connect this. And we create thousands or hundreds of pathways with all this <coughs> grafting, in a way. And you don't really know where the water comes up and where the growth and thickness uh, will take place. So it's a very complex system that come out, and re you really have to find a way to simulate what will happen to make a kind of a forecast. So what we were starting to do was measuring all diameters, calculating all the crown volumes that you have, estimating how much biomass this 
individual tree in the beginning can produce to produce how much wood and so on to get, get a rough estimation of what happens in general um, regarding the total mass, what is appearing over time. But that's only a very rough approach. The next step we just did um, the last uh, semester is um, trying to go more in detail after we already have built the tower. Um, as every complex question nowadays, you put it in Grasshopper and get an answer. So um, you just so we were trying to break down again these patterns of growth to make a forecast um, by uh, programming the, the growth patterns and um, let it grow um, based on relations between the transport of water to growth and thickness and so on. We could calibrate this away a, a little bit and we come out with quite realistic results to very different patterns of um, interconnected trunks and um, we, will, we are starting to use this as a digital design tool to deal with the high complexity of these naturally growing structures. In the end, very roughly summarized, what happens is uh, two basic things. The plants at the corners, they grow the most because they have the most light. Very simple. Um, so they become a little bit thicker than these in the, in the middle of the surface. And we overlay this with some um, thing that happens just uh, by accident. So if some part is, I don't know why, dying or is accidentally cut away, um, it will, or it will die or whatever, um, this, uh, you, will, you will lose some of these elements. And we are dealing with this. And um, we know that it will come out somehow like this. So we don't know really how, but this is more or less the dimension it can reach. And based on this, we try to make a model, a physical model, simple model of, made of wire how it could, like, it could look like, let's say, in five to seven years from now on. So this is um, more or less um, the forecast of the tower. At that point, I want to go a little, beta, a little bit deeper in the concept um, of dealing with the uncertainty of growth processes um, to give, by giving you an example of what we are doing in uh, teaching. So normally, we teach how to draw or we teach how to program and so on. But it's really uh, not uh, very um, common to deal with something you can't draw. To teach the students how to deal with this, we are working with models, normal cardboard models. But we just put them in a solvent of salt, which will suck up, and the salt will sprout out, will flower out in a way. This, then the students are asked to draw a forecast, how it will look like, and they have to wait for one week or two, and then they have to compare their forecast to what really happened and to draw it again. Just to know how right or wrong they are and trying to find a way of, of abstraction to meet more or less what happens. Just to give you this example. comes out like this. So the focus was totally different, but um, we're really creating quite fascinating structure. We are now applying this to these um, models of urban planning and let to start to let go whole, whole cities in this way. Okay, based on these findings, we were asked to create a much bigger project. The Plain Tree Cube in Nagold. Nagold is a small town in South Germany. There was a horticultural show um, in 2012. Um, and we were asked to create simply something new, something big. And we are, were trying to apply these findings to create uh, this structure. It's very comparable to the tower. Um, it's roughly 10 by 10 by 10 meters. It's made of nearly 1,000 young plane trees. Um, and it has to be erected in a very precisely defined period of time. Because these uh, huge construction sites, of course, have a very, very tight schedule in a way. So you have only two weeks to build it. 
what we did, we know that, that we had some time before, just this is the, this is the floor plan. In the end, it will end up in, in a line of townhouses. Normally, there's a stone house made of stone on a green garden, and we just flipped it in a way. We had a concrete surface with a greenhouse, in a way. So what we were doing here, we really had to plan everything. We can do, but we can really plan precisely the starting point of the growth, and we have to because this is engineering and constructing. We had to plan every plant. The problem is when you plant and draw this plant here, it, is, it has to be two meter, and in the moment you plant, it's only 20 centimeters because it's still growing in the nursery somewhere. So it's a very speculative thing in a way, but you somehow have to do it. And then we made a kind of um, living building pre-production. So normally, if you have a short time, you make pre-production architecture. Now these are technical elements, plant pots, with uh, here two and here two young uh, plane trees, pre-arranged in the right shape, in the right angle. So every thing has really to meet in the end uh, exactly with a millimeter or centimeter with the steel structure, with the, with the scaffolding in a way. Um, and then we had one season to pre-produce these trees to let them grow. We already pre-produced these inoculations. We let them, we started to grow. Uh, and then the three trucks, the whole thing came through whole Germany. 800 kilometers from one side to the other um, <coughs> has nothing to do with sustainability, but um, was the only way to do. Um, and then it's flying in by crane, very simple. And then we just have to screw together these different levels of plants. So, but most of these uh, connections are already uh, prepared, and we just have to plug it to the, the watering and nutrition system. So after two weeks, we have this. The gardeners were even faster than the steel company, so the steel company was very in a rush to, to be faster than the gardeners. When the gardeners were starting on the one end, the steel company hasn't finished yet on the other end. These are some impressions of the first year. Here you can see a kind of a green wall. This is the atmosphere created with this shade. It's more or less, we are not very we think we, we think we can do more in the first year with, with stronger plants, but it was more or less the atmosphere of a, of a tree crown where you could walk up three levels, all, uh, all based on these scaffolds. This is numbered with 2028. That's the estimation where we are planning to remove this uh, scaffold ele scaffolding element and hope that the whole thing will be self-supporting. This is the connection point where two plants are connected with these, these um, big trusses, iron trusses. They are very high and they can carry very high loads because um, we really try to balance the whole thing. We don't know if one corner is completely dying or so. We don't know. So we try to make the technical part as stiff as possible to balance the load uh, no, no matter where it is going, how much. Yeah. And this is the spatial situation in the beginning. We have an open sky, three levels to walk on, and a green wall created with the leaves. And you have these very fragile young plants in contrast to a lot of steel. And that's the forecast here for the future. Wait a second. You can see that the, the space completely changes. It will close, hopefully, um, completely shading the whole area. The trunks will grow in thickness. You already know these connection points. And the relation of steel and wood completely changes. And that's the forecast for the construction part. So you can see here these load-bearing elements that are made of steel. They are temporary. You can see all these plant pots. And step by step, we're planning to remove them when they merged. And in the end, we're planning to put out these, all these vertical steel elements that is carried by this kind of living framework. And you, it is planned that you can still walk on the third level completely uh, in a kind of a 
artificially designed tree top. And that's the image um, we try to generate. We don't know really, but somehow you have to sell an image and um, what will come out in the end. And it's very um, impressive what you can do with images in contrast to the reality. So the reality was that we used 36 tons of steel and 200 kilos of living wood. And with this image, we were winning the innovation prize for uh, wood construction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's, the prize is just based on hope, of course. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this was um, the main part of the lecture con uh, regarding the built parts and I will, I will come now to a concept um, and competition entry I and a colleague did uh, for a competition um, for, for a so-called house of future in Berlin. The um, task was to design a house similar to a museum where you where the future, future techniques and all these things we don't know at the moment how they will look like will be exhibited. A very huge building with 12,000 square meters. So we were totally sure that we can't make a living load-bearing structure. But we were um, very convinced that we can uh, deal with this uh, task of building for the future with our approach. Because if you have to represent the future, we thought it is a good decision to do this with the technique where a building comes out where you don't know where, how it, it will look like in the future. Uh, this is a black plan, the city plan in a way. This is the building. It's uh, in the middle of Berlin. We have the main station here. We have the Reichstag, our government here. Um, and you have really to rethink the way you draw. Normally you have really you have these circles for trees. You really can um, see when you look at a map this is a tree or these uh, urban plants and you have these blocks for houses. They are black and the others are green. So um, very simple because it's divided in these two different worlds. And here we are trying to at the first, at the, this uh, level of detail just to draw the, the very basic uh, pattern of how a thing like this could uh, look on the on the floor plan of a city, and that the that the image we did, there was a rule we could make only we could um, present only one image, one render, so we didn't know if how to do it with summer and winter. So we split it the the, the image in, in two halves to show in one image what could happen over over the seasons, and of course again this is really a speculation what will come out, um, but you can really see the, the differences and I will come to this later on. This is a spatial concept of this exhibition building. The basic idea is that you normally become very tired when you're visiting a museum. So you go from one exhibition room to the other and seeing and seeing and seeing and seeing every new things and uh, then you get crazy. So because you can't really uh, consume so much information. But if you make a rest in the park, you refresh in a way and you, then you can uh, absorb more information again. So the idea was to make these three facades and this um, is the whole building is encircled by a ramp covered outside the facade with glass and then the trees. So you, you walk always inside, but from um, the appearance of the space, when you step out these exhibition rooms and walk up the ramp, your, your view is through the, the branches and through the leaves and all these uh, impressions that are generated by the tree, the shades and so on. You even can open some windows, uh, hearing the birds singing and so in the middle of the, of the town and you go up and go in the next exhibition room. This is a spatial concept and this is more or less the detailing. This in, in time, we always have to detail in time somehow. 
And this is um, the first step where we have, in this case, it's uh, vertical pots where many plants are planted in. And then it's put out. You, put, uh, you remove part of these pots. And t over time, it is a very similar um, process as in the platanum cubus. Um, the trunks become very thick, um, quite stable. They don't carry any load in this case, but um, they merge to one. The whole, all the pots are removed, and you really have this artificially based pattern, which is created by man, overlaid by the randomness of growth and decay of living and, uh, and died elements of this structure, uh, plus all the branches and so on that's, that's put out. But this is much more than decoration. So we know that it's not a lot building structure in this case. But we all know the, the very well-known benefits of trees in town. So of course, they shade. They cool down the air by evaporation, transpiration. And they filter the air because um, um, the, the fine dust and so on lies down on the leaf and is washed away with the rain again. So we were trying to deal with these aspects as part of the um, climatic concept of the whole building and the whole space. This is more or less the situation uh, in the summer, or let's say even in, in, in spring or autumn, where we have some leaves. It is, in, in Germany, it's between 15, 20 degrees, uh, and you can open the window, you have natural ventil ventilation, and the whole thing, the whole glass facade is already covered and shaded by, by the leaves of the trees. Um, and when, when the summer is very hot, you need some additional cooling uh, that's, that comes in this case from the ground, um, and the, the windows are mostly closed, but the sh shading and the cooling effect is more intense, of course. And the interesting thing now is we still speak about a building. Normally, the, the space is occupied, and you can plant a tree. And by merging the building and the tree, or one very thin layer on the facade, at the same time the tree spruits out and creating a huge tree top, um, we have a building that where the, the, the environment really benefits. So it's not only cooling the building, of course, it's cooling um, the street, the place, everything around, similar to a normally grown tree. But of course, at the same space of the building, more or less, and created more or less in the ti same time timeline of the creation of the building. And not, not planting a small tree and waiting decades until it's big enough. In the winter, it's completely different. Um, we know this very much from traditional architecture. Then we have no leaves. The sun can come in and it can contribute to the heating of the building. Additionally, the whole thing is um, planned to be integrated uh, in a water management system. So instead of having the problem of rainwater, what to do with this, we, we restore it in the ground and um, lead it to the, the root space of, of these trees and then by evaporation use it for cooling the building by feeding the, tree, the trees with water. This is the details. We were really trying to find a good way to do all these details. So we ended up with two completely different drawing method methods. This is the AutoCAD drawing, and it is combined with Photoshop because we didn't really know how can we draw this undrawable thing in a way. Um, we somehow had to mix, and it's very funny if the, you see these construction points where you have a connection between um, the insulation and so on, this technical stuff, and outside it's plucked with a, with a living tree. And that's the view from the inside. I think you can really can see that you could feel, despite it is really made of concrete in the inside, you really could feel um, to be in the middle of a tree when you're in a building. Finally, to summarize, um, I want to look a little bit back. 
and thereby showing what we, of, of, where we want to go with the approach of Bobotanic. So if you look in the, at the, in the past of um, our urban environment, let's say the medieval ages, you have very dense, very small towns. And outside you have the forest or the wild nature. It's completely separated in a way. We have a wall separating the houses and the trees. Then we come to 19th and 20th century. It's a very, very rough summary of history, I know. Um, where the tree enters somehow the city. We have boulevards planted with trees and so on. We have parks in the city now. The city is growing outside. We have outskirts. We have suburban developments. And the house somehow comes in the forest, let's say, in, in, in the outer areas. And then that's only a, a graphical thing, what we do. We just merge these symbols to one and really try to, to fuse not the forest and the city, but the tree and the building to work on a new vision of a kind of natural urban life. Thank you. And now it's open for questions.